And welcome everyone here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Bannerman Zed, the deck that I still think is probably the best deck in Legends of Runeterra. We're going to play it through five games today and see if that holds true. Um, for the, those of y'all watching on YouTube, I am kind of switching this up and going with five game sets instead of 10 to make the videos uh, shorter for those of y'all on YouTube. And I hope that it's um, you know, easier to watch, you know, you can watch it, hopefully watch them during your, your lunch break or other things like that. We should have like 30 minute to an hour videos instead of an hour and a half to two hours. But anyway, um, here we go. Like this is, uh, Demacia based with Bannerman. We are really focused on aggressive, you know, being aggressive, um, with Bannerman. We are not really doing too much challenger stuff. We do have Laurent Protégé and I guess it's Laurent Protégé and Fleet Feather Tracker, um, and I guess Swiftwing Lancers. We still have those, but I guess we don't have like Fiora and Barriers and everything like that. Whoa, Fred with that that sub, Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Fred. Oh, it's that donation, but yeah. Getting that Twitch Prime sub in here gets us to our sub goal, gets us closer to our next 12 hour stream for that. Um, but anyway, yeah, let's get to it. We're playing, we're playing five spells. We got uh, Zed and Twin Disciplines as far as Ionia, Ionia goes. I just think Twin Disciplines is just so, so good. Whether you're using it for the plus zero, plus three, or even the plus three on like Zed or, or anything else. Like it, it's just so versatile of a spell um, that I think it's worth playing it, even though you want as many um, Demacia cards as possible because you really don't want to miss Bannerman. So I'm still in I'm still in the camp that Twin Disciplines is is worth it, but I can be talked into playing Prismatic Barrier instead of Twin Disciplines. Um, you know, like if if we hit some bad variants and we miss on Bannerman a couple of times because of this card, you know, maybe we'll have to switch. But so far it hasn't hurt us too much, and Twin Disciplines has been awesome. So let's get to it. Let's play some Bannerman Zed. Let's go play some aggro here in ranked. All right, and let's update. We'll update our sub goals. Whoa, we are really close to a 12 hour stream. We're actually at 19 out of 20 sub goals hit. So we're gonna be doing a 12 hour stream real soon. All we need is one more sub goal. So either five more, five more subs today or five subs tomorrow, or you know, the next day that we get five subs then we're going to unlock a 12 hour stream this is a, a good hand let's keep it for the 12 hour stream i i'm not really planning on doing i'm not planning on doing uh legends of runeterra for all 12 hours because this game is is pretty mentally challenging and uh taxing and everything and, and I think it'd be kind of tough for, for 12 hours in a row and so I was so it's probably gonna be doing like like six hours Legends of Runeterra and then six hours something else to you know have some variety in there you know maybe some more Animal Crossing like we played the other day Please don't have Mystic Shot. Don't kill my Zed. Don't kill my Zed. No. No. Oh, that Zed was going to be so good. It was going to be so good. Awesome, g -Ville. Cool. Glad you're enjoying that Heimer Control deck. Good. Nice. All right, well, it all went apart. My opponent had awesome start here. So it all fell apart for us. Making the dead deader. Deader. Hmm. 
Using single combat doesn't really work. I had a really great hand. It's an interesting way to use Ezreal. I don't think I don't know if I've seen Ezreal too much like this, but yeah, like those these vile feasts with Ezreal have been amazing. Yeah, they just have all the removal. Oh, <clears throat> likely going to be losing this because we don't have we don't have a card advantage. That's something we don't have. Spell that? A fight to cook it. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. This is risky, because of course they can have removal. Yay! Could have played Bannerman to make it to like have like a 4 4 to be able to fight. But I wanted to save Bannerman and get get more things pumped up. A worth no, our Bannerman whiffed. Oh. I feel like I, we were doing so good. We were doing so good. And then the Bannerman whiffed. Ouch. Ouch. Can't fight on an empty stomach. I don't want their Spiderling to be able to trade with anything. The Chump Wump was going to be able to kill one of these. I think it was going to be able to kill something. They have two more spells with their two mana. Two one mana mystic shots? Ow. Ow. Man, what an amazing hand. Yep. Our twin disciplines cost us. That really, really cost us. If that was just prismatic barrier, our bannerman would have gave all those things plus one plus one. All right, well, that, that. That's one of the first times that really, really cost me. But it did this time. Yeah, like that could have been the difference in the game, honestly. Probably not Alarian. Don't have any plans to right now. Bonestack looks really sweet. Well, I've had every answer, and then I also had the uh, Bannerman miss. Yeah, they had every answer there. Especially early on, like our, our opening hand was was pretty awesome and pretty difficult to deal with, but they uh, dealt with it in stride.
All right, so if we're going to continue on our streak of four ones, we got to get on it now. All right, another Ezreal deck, but this time the, the more traditional one with Karma. Good curve filler. Second game in a row that we didn't have a one drop and we had the attack token on turn one and we just top decked a one drop. That's two fortunate times in a row. Uh, so what's the question is what's the better deck to climb the ladder, Frostbite Midrange or Ash Harrowing? That's, that's tough, honestly. It's really close. Um, I could basically be convinced of the right answer being either one. Um, so I, I guess, like, so basically, I think it's really close. If you have, if you have like, a preference, if you have, like, one of the two decks that you think that you'll enjoy playing more, I would recommend going with that one. The Ash Harrowing deck is more powerful. The games take longer, so you'll you will rank up slower because the games take longer, but it's more powerful. Um, but then also, with more power and, and expensive stuff, it's a little less less consistent as well. If I had to pick one, I would probably I would pick Ash Harrowing. If I had to pick one. Um, I don't know if it's really any better to be the first attacker or the second in in general. I don't know if there's like a general rule of which one's to better. It, it kind of just it matters like what cards you have and how it fits your curve. You know, if you have like the if you have like the two drop, four drop that you want, you know, that you know, like if you have like Elise, you want to be attacking on turn two. You know, if you have Teemo, you want to be attacking on turn one. It, so it's kind of Kind of depends on like what you have. It's not just always attacking turn one's better because like like the fearsome decks would rather be attacking on turn two. I like saving Bannerman to my last card, and so that's why I was debating about in my head of of playing just just playing Protector this turn and saving Bannerman, but. Um, I think with us attacking this turn, we have the Radiant Strike to help out. Uh, too bad that does too much. Well, yeah, you'd say like this deck wants to attack on turn three because of Zed, but you know we we are a Lucian deck as well. Attacking turn two can be awesome with playing the Fleet Feather Tracker turn one. They play a one drop, you play Tracker, then you untap, then you play the Bright Steel Protector on the Tracker, and then get to attack turn two with the uh, Barriered Bright Steel Protector. Don't get in my or Barriered way. Tracker. So yeah, basically... There's some kids outside. Basically... Uh, so the RV barked. This deck's that's that's one strength of this deck. It can really do well either way. It's not, it's not like it wants one or the other necessarily. It can do well either way. Strike hard. All right, seven damage. We had double Twin Disciplines protection. There we go. Any good budget decks for the ladder? Um, I believe, 
I believe Mobile Addicts has like a budget filter. Here, yeah, on Mobile Addicts, click, um, yes, yeah, I would kind of recommend Spider's Aggro, but if you click that, there are some budget decks on, if you click that, there's a budget tab that just has a handful of decks. Ash. Those aren't those aren't the most up to date lists, but the the most the most budget is like the spider aggro of working towards that one. If you go over to like the meta tier list, you know, and and uh, of course you know you can you can kind of work you know just upgrade what you have like from your starter deck because you're you have you get it like a starter deck that's pretty close to that, or at least it has the champion it has some of the champions for you. So basically I have to be worried about like Brittle Steel. Like what if I just use the Radiant Strike right now to make this a 4-3 and then attack with the War Shafts make it a 5-4. They don't get to Brittle Steel anymore. They could still use the 3 mana Frost Breath thing but then at that point it's a 4-5. Or it's an 0-4. I don't want them to use Brittle Steel. Like, like they're certainly playing three Brittle Steels, but they may not be playing. Like, they're probably not playing very many of the Frostbeth cards. They, they, I'm sure they have some. I should probably learn the name of the other one. It's like Frostbite or something. I mean, Frostbite's the mechanic. Flash Freeze. Is that it? Maybe that's it. So all that ended up was a two for two trade. We traded Radiant Strike for Elixir of Iron and War Chefs for Omen Hawk. Not a great two for two trade for us, but Zed got to hit them, got to do five damage, and it's halfway to leveling up now. And most importantly, Zed survived. And so they can have twin disciplines now to protect Zed. Sentinels of light don't fear the dark. Oh my gosh. I wasn't expecting Avalanche at all, obviously. Formation. Wow. That was not expected at all. I was planning on next turn having Warships with, you know, twin disciplines to protect it. Wow. Smell that? A bite to cook it. I'm what nightmares fear. I can't attack there. I can't. All the world on one arrow. Hmm. So I take nine and go down to eight. And it's gonna be tough. Man, that avalanche. Now. I like it though, from from their perspective. Avalanche is is that's a good card to be playing right now. I like it.
time is right. Strike now. So it did have flash freeze. I'm thinking about using all of these, you know, like pumping up Swiftling Lancer with the plus three, the plus one, plus one, and then single combat, fight the four, four, and then have these trade. Um, that's having three spells to, to try to end my Swiftling Lancer to take out these two, but they still have six cards. Still have six cards. Or six mana, sorry, six mana. Sorry. Yeah. That's the problem with six mana. Right there. Barbarossa, guide me. GG's. Killer Avalanche and then Absolute Killer Frost Breath cards. Frostbite cards. need to play around Avalanche better. I did not play around Avalanche well enough. Did not do that. Okay. So let's get rid of the single combat. That hasn't looked so great. I'll keep Twin Disciplines... Keeping Twin Disciplines does keep a an Ionia card in hand. Also. What's that noise? So one and two. This is already the most loss of losses I've ever had with this deck. <laughs> the other two times we played it, we were um, just attack. The other two times I played it, we w we went nine one both times. Oh, wish I would have just attacked originally and not played the protege. Skitter is that kind of card makes you regret playing things beforehand. But I think we're in a pretty decent spot right now. One opponent. So it, it wouldn't stop here if they didn't have a spell, right? So we know they have some spell that costs two or less. Okay, Crawling Sensation. I was going to say that it's probably... Like, the thing that I was going to guess would be Glimpse Beyond, where they'd be able to sacrifice. And they were, like, thinking about whether or not to sacrifice. That, that would have been my guess.
All right, attack for three. We'll take it. Play another protege. Who doesn't know the name Laurent? The, yeah, the spider karma deck. Um, it looks like a good way. I've played against it. You know, like we've been playing against it this week, and. It's looked good. It just looks like a good way to, you know, use Karma to outgrind people, but then also be able to, like, it seems like a really good mid-range deck, like, where you can play aggressive games and can go wide and stuff like that, but you can still play a late game and you have Ruination and Karma and you have a great late game. Um, so you, you can really mix and match, you know, you can be the control deck or the aggro deck, depending on what you need to do. It looks like I'm dead here also. Man, we are having a rough a rough time today. We're having a rough time today. Okay, there is there is an auto pass that you can disable. Honestly, I should be killing a Spiderling, not one of those, because the Spiderlings are just better than Frenzied Skitter, because they could play another Iceborne Legacy, and then those things are even better. Could be decent. If we go like protector, protector, rally. Nah, I guess I should probably just use a protector right now. Make it more difficult for them to attack in with all this stuff. But it doesn't make it too difficult. How do you want me in the next turn? Seven, eight, nine. This stuff costs ten. So we're gonna have nine and it costs ten to play my hand. Come on, really? Another one of those? Three Brood Awakenings? No, no, that was only two, right? Just the two this turn. But yeah, double... Iceborne Legacy and a double Brood Awakening. If we win this game... Like, this is like their dream game, right? If we can fight back and win this game... Uh, it's not their dream game, obviously, but... Well, 
Well, that's gonna hurt my chances. Naturally. Never mind, dream game. Wow. All right, one more, Bannerman Zed. <laughs> yeah, five mana, 21 power toughness, and then five mana, 27 power toughness. Dang. And then and then the they who endure was six mana twenty-six power toughness. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. And we like we fought through the five mana twenty-one and then five mana twenty-seven. We fought through those. I want to trade because I don't want, because this hawk can kill my Zed and Lucian. So that's why I'm offering the trade. Plus, I'm the more aggressive deck, so it's good to get damage in. They're the bigger deck. Usually when you have mirror matches, you know, this is kind of mirror-ish, like, this is kind of like a mirror match. Usually when you have those, the deck that goes bigger is going to be the deck that wins. It's very rare that when you have a mirror match, the deck that goes smaller wins. Playing Protégé so that we can get rid of their 2-1 Challenger. They can't just challenge my Lucian. Break their spirit and their soul. Yeah, I did. I jinxed it when I called it the best deck. Yep, absolutely. 100% jinxed it for sure. <laughs> and so to unjinx it, we have to play Jinx Aggro. <laughs> The only way to unchinks. It's the only way to unchinks a jinx. <laughs> do 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 do. We're gonna need to use these things. I'm going to do that. Not sure what I want to do with this. I think the answer is nothing.
This gives me a lot of a lot of mana to use, five mana to use for these things. This will not take long. Shield up. do thinking about twin disciplines twin disciplines the toughness here and then have this fight fiora so i'm using i'm using two spells to take out fiora that doesn't seem worth it oh i should oh i should have used the the living shadow to single combat the fiora i guess i could have done that Could have done that. You're covered. Um, no, hamster, I didn't. I do not know that duck. My seal is yours. Should be able to keep everything alive. the death of me. Oh, I really hope we don't get punished for playing this pre-combat. for playing that pre-combat. This is, a, this is a tough game. This is a really tough game. Um, I'm putting Senna second because I think they they more likely want to kill Lucian. If they, they kill Lucian, then Senna flips or levels up or whatever. Um, if I do it the other way around, I think they just kind of like let, let Senna hit him and then and still kill Lucian. This would be lethal if they just block like that. If they just block like this, this is lethal. That puts them down to zero. They just block like that. Lethal. Boom. 
There we go. All right, so finished two and three. Okay, you know, respectable, we're getting there. But um, yeah, you know, it was a tough video. Our first loss, uh, the Twin Disciplines really cost us that first game. Like that, it, it did. Uh, future games, it was awesome. But that first game, it, it really did cost us because Bannerman uh, whiffed with, um, with uh, um, whatever it's called, um, because of the Twin Disciplines, with the Allegiance. There we go. That's what I was thinking. And then our, our uh, yeah, then we played a couple other games, like where, you know, we just, we just ended up losing. They were real good close games, but opponents had the cards. And uh, anyway, I'm still really confident in this deck. I think this deck's very good. It's a very good deck to level up with, uh, to rank up with. Um, it's not too difficult to play. And uh, as you can see, you know, we got through our five games in 40 minutes. So it's it's um, a faster deck to play also. So, you know, like if you, you know, like the the more games you can get in, the the faster you will rank up just in general. I have to say I was kind of, I was disappointed by the single combats this time. That was a card that didn't really look so great, but it's something that you kind of need because there's just the champions that you have to kill, you know, like whether it's you have to kill Ezreal or Karma or, or whatever, you just have to kill champion sometimes. So it's in there, but it, it didn't pull its weight for us in these games. Yeah, we got wrecked by that Avalanche, that second game. I, I didn't play around Avalanche at all. It was Avalanche, and then and then after that, it was, you know, like what, like four four frostbite cards on the same turn like at the same attack that was that was tough um yeah but twin disciplines yeah that's what i'm talking about i'm i'm not saying that a hundred percent you should be playing twin disciplines over prismatic barrier it's possible that i'm it's safer to play prismatic barrier for bannermen um it's possible i'm being too stubborn um, thinking that it'll never hurt us um, because, you know, like that game, that last game, it did. It, you know, we hit the two out of 39 chance. Whenever you play a Bannerman, we hit twin disciplines. Um, and so, you know, like that's going to happen sometimes. Like that's just, it's just math. Like it's, it's going to happen um, every once in a while. So it's maybe possible you should just be playing tris prismatic barriers instead. But yeah, there we go. So that's Bannerman Zed. Yeah, the Frostbite midrange using Avalanche. I like that. There's so many spiders running around these days and, and decks going wide. I think that's I think that's probably a good call playing the Avalanches. I like that. Uh, favorite deck that I played today? Um, the Ash Harrowing just for today was awesome. Like we had some really, really good uh, matches with that. A whole lot of comebacks and everything. It, the Ash Harrowing uh, for the decks today was my favorite my favorite out of the decks we played today is probably the the yasuo one because i you know yasuo is pretty sweet but as far as the games go and everything the ash harrowing was awesome today but there we go that's bannerman zed those y'all watching on youtube hit that like button over there leave a comment let me know how this deck's going for you if you've been playing it yourself uh let me know how you like these shorter videos hopefully uh you like those as well um and of course if you want a donation deck donation decks uh, I'm going to have two options for the donation decks. Sorry. Uh, the $10 donation, as we talk, as we have been talking about, if you want your deck played on stream, and, you know, I'll play it through 10 games and everything like that for the donation deck. But then also, if you just want your deck through a five-game set like this, you could do a $5 donation, and I'll play your deck through a five-game set for that. Um, you just you have to have your deck code for that one. That one I won't be like building decks for for just the five dollar donation. But um, yeah, just five bucks. I'll play your deck five matches, and we'll see how it goes. So the link is down below for those y'all watch on YouTube. It's in the it's in the description. The donation link. Uh, just put your deck code and tell me what day you want me to play it. It's as easy as that. All right, but there we go. That's Bannerman Zed. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.